Okay, I'm Liv. Thank you very much for listening. This is Giulio Prisco and this is my very first uh, Facebook Live webcast. Uh, we are here to listen to Bill Bambridge's uh, talk about space and cosmic religions in Second Life. Uh, so now I'm going to switch the camera to the monitor where I'm running Second Life. Remember that this is the first experiment. I don't know how to use Facebook Live. A lot of things can go wrong, but if it works well, it's going to be a nice uh, way to webcast events that take place in virtual worlds. Uh, okay, so if you are listening to this talk, uh, please comment and let me know if it's interesting and how it works. Uh, I'll now switch the camera to the other view. And here uh, you see the Second Life environment. And uh, I'm going to switch my microphone off now and give the floor to Bill. Thank you very much, Bill. You're on. for me to begin? I'm waiting to make sure that Julio's got everything in shape. upon where on this planet you are. Of course, we're going to be thinking today about the possibility of other planets. Uh, you might look for the first few minutes at this black cube here, which could represent outer space, uh, could represent the mystery of the future. Uh, but I'm going to use it to display a small uh, number of images starting with this one. And uh, of course you can adjust your viewpoint uh, if your avatar is sitting in a place inconvenient to see the face I'm displaying. Did humanity's dream of conquering space end with the last moon flight in 1972? The image on the left of this face of the cube is actually a photograph I took while standing on a beach in Florida, December 1972, of the last Apollo launch, Apollo 17 to the moon. Uh, you can't actually see the rocket because uh, the bright uh, flare uh, blanked it out. The uh, uh, water at the bottom is the portion of the ocean between where I was standing and the launch pad. You can see the launch tower very slightly. In a way, this is like a Rorschach inkblot test. What was the meaning of the end of the Apollo program? Indeed, uh, late 1972 was the same time that the nuclear engine for rocket vehicle application, the NERVA project, was canceled. And uh, one of the issues in space technology, really since the early 1940s, when uh, some at the German base at Pingamunda that developed the V2, uh, Dr. Walter Thiel, for example, uh, was exploring the theoretical possibilities for nuclear rockets. Uh, is it possible, uh, and it certainly went through my mind at that moment, uh, that this was the high watermark of Western civilization? In my own uh, memory, I often compared it with standing on the Roman wall in uh, northern England, looking north to where my barbarian Scottish ancestors uh, were living and thinking of that as the high watermark of a civilization. And one moment. This 
this is a uh, very profound cartoon that was published in the Washington Post uh, newspaper uh, done by the cartoonist uh, Tom Tolles uh, just at the time that the space shuttle program concluded in 2011. Uh, you'll notice uh, that the last astronaut to fly in the shuttle is telling a little figure that may represent Uncle Sam, I don't know, our final report, there's no escape. And up in the air above the Earth, Earth's climate destruction. Now there are many viewpoints on the human future. Uh, must we develop a totally static, sustainable world culture? with no ambitions beyond this earth, or perhaps no ambitions at all. If we were to set our goal as total sustainability within an enclosed earth, well, perhaps I, perhaps you could uh, uh, accept that, could enthusiastically contribute to it. We don't necessarily know how to do it, uh, but myself, I would prefer to have hopes literally above and beyond that. Uh, will the world naturally take us into space eventually by conventional progress in science, technology, economy, and government? Question mark. Or is it not heading to I think someone may have a mic on. I'm hearing some odd sounds. Um, And let me turn to the third image. Well, for example, uh, some visionaries talk about mining the asteroids. And that is an image of a spaceship assisted by uh, some small drones uh, using the equivalent of laser beams to vaporize the surface of an asteroid, then using magnetic means to pull in the atoms that are wanted. Uh, it's conceivable that various technologies might be developed to mine the asteroids. Uh, but when you go past the hype, what you discover is that that may be of value if one is living among the asteroids or otherwise in orbit, uh, not bringing expensive minerals back to Earth. Uh, you know that the Earth is favored not merely in having oceans, a breathable atmosphere, but having a geological history that concentrated various elements gold, uranium, copper, you name it, uh, in mine deposits, ore deposits that can be mined. That same process did not happen in the asteroids. So with a few exceptions, conceivably isotopes of hydrogen or something like that, um, the minerals are not concentrated. Uh, mining them would require something totally different and then there's the cost of transport, the safety issues, and so on. I at least find this a vision that's attractive, but implausible as a means to motivate capitalist economies to go out into space. Now what this is actually a photograph of, this is in a sense real, I swear it is, uh, this is my mining spaceship in the online virtual world called EVE, uh, sometimes described as a game, EVE Online, in which it imagines a civilization that is living in orbit in space stations, spaceships, and asteroids. Uh, that's not just a metaphor for how dreams are fictional, but a suggestion that there might be other technical means for us to go out into the universe rather than to ship our bodies, what some astronauts refer to as spam in the can, rather than shipping our bodies 
uh, using uh, automatic probes not only to go and observe but to go and accomplish things, uh, thus uh, spreading human civilization as an information system out into the cosmos. Um, this sense that we may explore and exploit outer space to some extent through information technologies, even without sending our physical bodies there. Now, it may be a little controversial to bring religion in at this point. And of course, the word in whatever language is our native one that we assign meaning to for religion is very much shaped by the well-organized, centralized, uh, legally incorporated religious denominations of Western societies, uh, whether the Roman Catholic Church, uh, uh, various other churches, uh, uh, temples, and so on, uh, with a notion of uh, ancient documents of the Bible, the Quran, and of course Bible is multiple books that have different meanings to different people, uh, thus anchored in a tradition where religion had already evolved considerably from what are often called the pagan days. You know, uh, the word pagan refers to uh, local areas. That is, there would be a shrine uh, at a local location. I myself have enjoyed uh, visiting one with the appropriate name Bath, or Bath to use the English pronunciation in England, where a local spring, a hot spring, was seen as uh, somehow sacred, connected to a particular deity. Well, if we evolve from that to monotheism, and in some parts of the world, of course, uh, I happen to have a Chinese aunt who thinks of herself as an aristocrat, and when I talk with her about religion, she says, oh, Bill, we Chinese are not religious. We are Confucian. And, of course, Confucius for the elite, was an ethical leader without all of the supernatural baggage and Chinese society uh, relied upon uh, Buddhism, Taoism, local forms of magic, etc. to f perform diverse religious functions beyond Confucianism. So what I mean by religion is something more diverse, more diffuse, than perhaps what the word uh, often means. But let me show you a religious symbol that uh, I'm uh, appropriating for purposes of this talk uh, that at least has uh, potential meaning. This is an artistic combination of the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. Alpha, the central part that looks a little like a rocket being launched, and Omega. Uh, this is a traditional religious symbol, but it can have revolutionary scientific implications, as we often use letters of the Greek alphabet, uh, Delta, Sigma, you name it, any mathematicians among you. But in the Bible, Revelation 1, 8, quote, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and was and which is to come, the Almighty. I could subscribe to 90% of that. It's just the question whether there is a Lord particularly one who has communicated to me effectively exactly what I must do. I do respect the works of the Roman Catholic priest, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, who wrote about the Omega Point in books with uh, translated English titles, The Phenomenon of Man and the Future of the Man. He sees humanity's transcendental goal to comprehend the universe. In 
English, the word comprehend can mean both to understand and to encompass. So for us to comprehend the universe may mean encompassing it, making it ours. And I'm suggesting that uh, if there is to be a launch of a new specific uh, religious movement along the lines I'm describing, conceptualizing as that rocket as that uh, alpha uh, would be uh, quite possible. Well, let's find our way to the fifth face of the cube. A galaxy, not ours, but it can stand in for ours. Galaxies are huge. We know that chemical rockets, hopefully with efficient launch means such as shuttles, so they won't be as expensive as today, could uh, have already taken space probes throughout the solar system, landers on, um, is it really four locations that have had landers, including, no, five, including two asteroids? Um, I was uh, particularly interested when it was happening in the Voyager 2 uh, probes. Uh, Voyager 2 left Earth in 1977, reached Jupiter in 1979, reached Saturn in 1981, Uranus, 1986, Neptune, 1989, and is drifting on outward toward the stars, expected to reach the distance of the nearest star in 50,000 years. I was at Jet Propulsion Laboratory, uh, the uh, NASA laboratory responsible for Voyager 2, doing research for two of the planetary encounters and during the 1986 one while we were there we viewed in real time the launch of the space shuttle that exploded shortly after launch uh, being there was actually the beginning of work on a book that i don't think is cited on the website, so I will put it into the text here. A questionnaire study uh, similar to my more recent uh, book on the space program of how a variety of people uh, viewed the future in space. Um, could humanity travel to the stars? It's conceivable that nuclear fusion power could achieve something like 5% of the speed of light, getting to the nearest star in one whole human lifetime. I remember attending a lecture at Yale University in which a British nuclear physicist predicted control of nuclear fusion, but that was 50 years ago. He said it would take just five years, so he was over-optimistic by at least one order of magnitude. I keep hearing that five-year prediction. So there are really two issues, one more obviously related to the solar system, the other to the galaxy. The first narrowly defined is economic, who is going to invest the money? required, for example, to start a Martian colony. Technically, we can get there. Technically, we can send machines there that work in the uh, Martian environment for many years. I happen to be uh, managing a grant um, in my other life at the National Science Foundation that has to do with um, uh, the next uh, space probe to Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. It won't land, but we could land there. So at great expense, existing technologies could conceivably colonize the better parts of our solar system 
if at great cost. But how does that get us to the stars? Uh, science fiction has proposed three alternatives. Uh, one is uh, multi-generation uh, spaceships, cities in flight uh, by uh, James Blish is only one of the uh, many sets of stories that uh, deal with that issue and I cite a number of others in the book I just put into the text chat. So multi-generation city-like spaceships that would be self-sufficient for hundreds of years could in principle take communities of living human beings generation after generation perhaps after unmanned probes had checked out where should they go perhaps to launch a colony. A second means uh, that science fiction has uh, suggested and here I will put another as yet unpublished but in press book into the text chat uh, bibliography is warping space or jumping through hyperspace an old idea but popularized in Star Trek and Star Wars and indeed Star Trek's going to launch a new thing soon and Star Wars just did to great popularity but the nearest discoveries of physics, black holes and quantum entanglement offer no practical means for um, sending human bodies um, at, let alone beyond the speed of light. There is um, a third possibility which shows up in uh, some science fiction uh, but that I've been writing about a bit and doing uh, some research that um, might in the long run contribute in some small way is travel not as physical bodies but as information. Uh, whatever way we conceptualize that today will probably be too primitive. But at least we can state things that make sense. If we could send robots to start a colony on a planet in a distant solar system, then either spaceships carrying data archives or um, admittedly low bandwidth, but sending by radio information about human beings. Uh, yes, their genetic makeup, but other kinds of information, perhaps to reconstitute them there. Uh, how could innovative religion encourage a social movement to achieve such things? You may sense that I have a perhaps a naive notion of religion as an evolving human cultural creation that adapted reasonably well to earlier conditions in our existence, including expressing what humans thought and felt, and yet becoming relatively obsolete and requiring new forms. Consider two common traditional concepts. Everyday religion today, particularly in Western countries, the soul and God. We may not be of one mind about these concepts, but both seem to be traditional and perhaps primitive expressions, not merely of hopes, but of phenomena we actually perceive if fail to understand. We sense our own consciousness as something not identical with our physical brains. We don't sense our own brains. Uh, yourself is a, can be conceptualized and it's really, by social science, as a dynamic pattern of information currently contained within your brain, but potentially emulated through information technology. The French pioneer of sociology, Emile Durkheim, wrote in elementary forms of the religious life 
that God was a metaphor for society. We can simulate, uh, at least with modest fidelity, not merely the functioning of an individual mind, but also through uh, multi-agent AI systems, the functioning of the vaster information society, that information system that is society. Um, here's uh, uh, just uh, one thing uh, published along those uh, lines. Um, social psychologists who focus on social roles view the self as a set of roles. So those can be um, uh, a component of uh, society as well as a way of capturing at least an aspect of an individual at some level of uh, fidelity. Uh, as uh, you gather, I've done a couple of books and various articles on standard opinion polls, one recently that's on the website for this uh, meeting. There does exist widespread enthusiasm for space exploration, but insufficient for secular democracies to invest adequate resources and effort. A social movement must be able to offer people today the real possibility of interstellar travel, not just for future generations, but for us ourselves. That requires transcendence of death. Here's one admittedly simplistic model, but to get the idea across. We set up an archive where the information representing a person can be preserved for centuries. We develop the technologies based on multiple sciences for high fidelity personality capture and emulation. We develop the diverse set of technologies for interstellar travel and colonization, when possible having other uses as well. Each person who is a committed member of the movement can contribute in whatever ways harmonize with interest and abilities. Some advance the science and technology. Others develop the movement. And others provide social services to fellow members. Um, there are many ways of contributing. And uh, giving a speech is only one of the most self-centered of ways of contributing. Uh, and I don't have the illusion that it is the best way. Everyone who contributes earns the right to be reborn at some time in the future elsewhere in our galaxy. Over the long term, branches of the movement established in other solar systems will earn the same right by colonizing further and further out across all the galaxies. In a sense, that gives our colonists in that system the right to be reborn again in another system, but also children born in that system the same right. I will end by suggesting that in this vast expansion, it may be a very long time before we encounter another intelligent species, but we will need to develop an ethical system that can guide us, not merely at that phase change point, but over all the years before then as well. As I'm presenting this, I'm imagining that only those who contribute can become colonists. That obviously would be one of the points for debate. Humanity's legacy of ancient religion is a transcendent treasure house of hopes and dreams. However, the alpha in this alpha omega dynamic does not yet exist and must be created. That's my final sentence. Thank you very much, uh, Bill. That was really a great talk. Huh? Uh, now, a couple of minutes I'm going to 
close the webcast and uh, in fact uh, oh uh, this was my very first uh, uh, broadcast that I'm using Facebook Live and I don't have the foggiest ideas how it works and uh, I don't know if the video and the sound were okay so I see that there are five viewers at this moment uh, I'd like to ask you to write something in the comment and to say something about the experience whether the video was good, the sound was good, the lighting was good or the technique was good uh, I have uh, realized that, that I'm not able to watch my own uh, broadcast as long as I'm broadcasting and uh, I'm going to stop now uh, we're not going to webcast uh, the question and answers session uh, well, uh, you still have time to jump to Second Life if you are a user and uh, participate interactively however uh, I very much look forward to see how this uh, first experiment went thank you very much for listening and uh, uh, I'll see you soon goodbye